Minds Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Torrance. Today we're going to take a quick detour and look at a hardware project, and we'll use that to analyze the running time of an assembly language program, and we'll see that you can actually uh, count up the number of cycles in a program and accurately determine the uh, amount of time it's going to take for the program to run. So let's get started. Okay, here we are with the Apple IIe. And what we're going to build today is a simple uh, digital to analog converter using the same uh, interface card that I used last time. And first let me apologize in case this video is a little shaky. It's because I'm trying to hold on to the camera and show you a lot of different things. Uh, but I'll do my best. So here's the circuit that we had last time. And if you recall it used a 6522A chip. And we've added a few resistors to this. And what we're building is something called a resistor ladder. Okay, so this is from Jeff Tranter's uh, website where he's doing experiments on an Apple One, and here's his picture of what a uh, resistor ladder looks like. And basically what you're doing is you're taking, uh, say, N uh, digital outputs and you're stringing them together using resistors, um, and by varying the uh, which uh, output bits are on and off, you can actually build up a a complex analog waveform. So now we're looking at the Apple IIe and this is within Merlin and you can see uh, it follows the same structure as our previous program where we're setting up uh, the port that we want to output to, in this case it's port B. We're uh, only doing four bits uh, just mainly to save on complexity and so the resulting uh, waveform will be a little bit uh, chunky. Uh, because of that and so all we do is we just we're going to create a sine wave and we're just going to do this by turning various bits on and off on that output port and so we loop over our sine wave samples and then once we're done with one wave then we'll just uh, jump right back to the beginning and uh, loop to create another cycle now we told it to uh, put the code at an origin of 6000 so if we just do get dollar sign 6000 that will load the code um, from where it was assembled in auxiliary memory into uh, main memory at 6000. We can do mon to actually go over uh, into the monitor and then we can start to run the program. But before I do that I'm going to actually set up the oscilloscope. So I'm just using a little tiny uh, oscilloscope. It's made by Bitscope and it's the Bitscope Micro and it is uh, controlled by this uh, Bitscope software uh, over on the Mac. So you can see I've got it plugged into the USB port. And so you can see on the bottom is the um, uh, output. So this is using uh, analog channel A on the bottom. And then the top is just the Fourier transform of that. So right now there's no signal. And on the Apple, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to say 6000 G to start the program and you can see there is our beautiful sine wave and you can see it's, it's kind of a stair step because we're only using four samples to actually construct this um, and you can actually measure the, uh, the frequency and that's what I've done with the two little bars there but what we want to do is actually try and compute the frequency uh, using just the, the clock cycles of the, uh, of the Apple IIe so if we look back on our program and what I've done here is just tried to write out the program, and sorry it's a little hard to see here. Um, but basically these are the instructions for the loop that creates the sine wave. And so you can see there's an inner loop um, which consists of 17 uh, clock cycles, and then an outer loop which adds an additional 5 clock cycles. Um, the inner loop, the, the last time that it runs, it's actually one clock cycle uh, less. Um, Actually, it's one clock, yes, because while it's running, when you take the branch there to go back to the uh, inner loop, that actually counts as three clock cycles. When you don't take the branch, um, then it's only two clock cycles for that B and E instruction. Um, so if we add all of that up, we get a total of 276 uh, clock cycles. So that's the 6502 clock. And then dividing by the... Um, the, the speed, which is 1.023 megahertz, uh, that gives us a total execution time of 270 microseconds. 
uh, for that, that should be for one uh, iteration or one uh, sine wave. And then if we go back to our oscilloscope, and it's a little hard to see, but I when you measure the actual distance between the peaks, so here's one uh, top of one peak, here's the top of the other peak, the uh, total turns out to be uh, pretty much exactly 270 microseconds. So sure enough, if you um, you know accurately add up all of the clock cycles for your program, then it, as you would expect, um, it actually turns out to be the uh, the actual speed that the program runs. And you know the the cool thing about this is you know with with modern uh, machines, it would be very difficult to actually do some you know add up all of your clock cycles like this. So it's it's pretty cool that with the uh, you know, the Apple IIe that you can you can add it up that way and you actually get what you expect. So I think that's all I'm going to show for this week. And next time I'll try and do maybe some uh, debugging in um, assembly language and uh, we'll see how that goes. So thanks for watching.